When a new free-to-play game is announced, we inevitably know that while the game will be free to, well, play, some additional elements within the game will not be. Sometimes the player buys some bonuses that allow them to pursue the game faster, at times it is new weapons and characters that make them stronger, but more often than not there is nearly always cosmetics for sale. We take for granted that costumes and dresses in games are just decoration, a minor detail to forget about, yet cosmetics play a great role in the gaming world and we give them credit, and deserve greater recognition, not to be sold as meaningless microtransactions. But first things first, roll the intro. How often have you heard the phrase, it's only cosmetic, it doesn't affect the gameplay anyways? This is a statement made by people who defend microtransactions as long as these do not affect the gameplay balance. I know this because it's something I said countless times. It makes sense after all. If you, developer, really need to sell me something extra in the game, I'd rather be an optional rope than an actual cool new weapon, so I can decide to buy it or not without being weaker than my opponents. And while this is true and sometimes I partially still believe in it, Making the argument that cosmetics do not matter at all is a bit of a paradox. If they don't truly matter, how come developers are willing to sell them at ridiculous prices? And perhaps more importantly, why are some people willing to buy them? When I say high prices, I truly mean it. I mean, look at these examples. In Fortnite, a legendary skin can cost $20, in League of Legends, $30, and in Overwatch 2, $50, all for individual skins. And don't think that this phenomenon is limited only for free-to-play games. Haha, <laughs> I wish. There are games sold at full price that still have the audacity to sell you digital clothing costing more than a real one. Yes, I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed, with your in-game shops for, and I repeat, a full retail single-player game. Of course I would not buy them in 1 million years, since I really despise this type of small purchases. I already have a hard time spending 10 euros for a DLC that actually expands the gaming experience. Spending more than that for a pixelated sundress is a big no-no for me. But of course, dressing my character is something I still quite enjoy, and if I have the option to buy in-game clothes with rupees and Mario coins, then sign me up. And that's the main point I want to address in this video. Dressing the main character in a game is an underappreciated feature, so much so that there's little outrage when it is hidden behind a paywall. Today I wish to highlight the positive aspects this feature has, and why in my opinion selling cosmetics in microtransactions is still a bad practice. So without further ado, I will say something I never said in my entire life. Let's go shopping! Cosmetics in video games have existed for quite a long time in a myriad of games. Sometimes dressing your character has a gameplay purpose, think of different armors that have different effects in games like The Witcher, Zelda and Skyrim, but some other times dressing is just for fun and a purely aesthetic choice. There are some games, mostly multiplayer titles, where new skins are unlocked by leveling up after various matches. Think of games like Rocket League for instance. Small side note here, I've always liked the fact that in Rise of Storm 2, the higher the level your character is and the more it… um, undresses himself. Like, am I the only one that has noticed this? What do you do when you reach level 1000? You start riding naked? Anyways, going back on track. In most single player games, new suits and shirts can either be purchased with in-game money or be obtained again by leveling up. If I were to list all games where this is possible, we would stay here forever, because again, this is a fairly common feature to have within a game. I love it when games go the extra mile and add specific retailers that sell unique brands and styles. In Watch Dogs 2, for instance, various shops around town sell quite a cool merch, and I found it tons of fun to customize my character every once in a while. Recently I bought Marcus a jacket that made him look like my video game hero, Goro Mashima from the Yakuza franchise. Pretty cool if you ask me. And speaking of Yakuza, in the fifth entry of the series, there are some interesting clothes to choose from in the postgame, from making Haruka look like Miku Hatsune, for some reason, to whatever Shinada is wearing over here. Man, these examples are getting weirder by the minute, maybe it is better to move on with the main argument of the video. Changing outfits is not only a common feature in the gaming world, but one that developers can fool around a bit and add personality to the game without altering anything else. There are literally people who speedrun Super Mario Odyssey to get Mario in his swimming suit. Dressing up is just that much fun. I will go the extra mile and claim that I prefer customizable clothing than customizable physical appearances. Although it is a nice addition to have the option to create your own character, I feel that some body and face building mechanics are too overwhelming. Clothing on the other hand is a bit more immediate, easier to grasp. I will say however that having both is of course better than having one or none. Alternating your character's outfits adds personality, uniqueness, a creative input that outputs attachment and affection to one's creation. Players spend countless hours in games, sometimes even whole weeks and months. The least developers can do is to allow players to choose their own dressing style. 
But alright, digital closets may be a neat addition to games, but they are definitely not essential. There are games out there that do not allow the player to change costumes, and they work just fine. So why should it be a big deal when games sell you cosmetics that do not impact the game in any way? After all, buying them separately can be a voluntary way to thank developers by giving them a small tip in exchange for a cool looking outfit. Well, dear viewer, if you're expecting me to say something like, yeah, it depends if the game is free to play and if the prices are reasonable, after all it depends, it always does, Dandos may be right, and blah blah blah, well, don't expect it, because this time I'm taking a firm position. I do not believe cosmetics should be sold in any circumstance. Full stop. Let me explain. Let's start off with the easier examples of full price games with gear that can be bought separately. Just no. Why on earth a 70 euro game needs to have additional paid content that does not actually expand the game in any meaningful way? I'm tired of hearing this silly explanation like, well, games take a lot of money to develop, because more often than not, big publishers are making their money back, and they are looking for a surplus. Know that I'm not fully against DLCs as a principle. If they are well done and they expand the game, they can be sold guilt free, and I will have no problem buying them. Removing, or at the very least killing down, a small, fun feature like outfits after releasing a game full price is just tasteless, an insult to the player who has invested trust to the developers behind the game, developers that often don't even see the extra profits made from the microtransaction. But what about free-to-play games? Behind these games there are many people who work hard to release a high-quality game for the low-low price of… well, nothing. The least they can do is to try to profit with optional, non-game-breaking cosmetics. They don't affect the gameplay, they can be fully ignored, where is the harm if they are hidden behind a paywall? Here my critique is a bit more philosophical than practical, meaning that while I'm still against the idea of cosmetics being sold in general, I cannot contest the economic reality, the system simply works like this now and it would take a miracle to revolutionize it. However, I still have some arguments to make. First of all, why are they free to play games to begin with? Think about it, we give for granted that some games are just free, since it has been like this for quite a long while. But it has not been like this forever, and the concept of free-to-play games is built over a delicate house of cards. A house of cards that has one sole pillar keeping it standing. Cosmetics. Mainstream free-to-play games make most of their money by selling cosmetics, since selling weapons or other items that could affect gameplay is extremely controversial, and for good reason. But why did we as players allow the beautiful and fun feature of cosmetics to be relegated to this humiliating role? Before you unlocked cool skins because you were good in a game, now you do because you are… rich? I'm not exaggerating when saying rich. Estimates of buying all cosmetics in free-to-play games are crazy. If you want to buy all cosmetics in League of Legends, you have to spend approximately 10,000 euros, and don't think that Fortnite, Diablo Immortal or Overwatch are much more affordable. I do wonder how we reach these extremes. 10 years ago, when Skyrim announced its golden horse armor at the ridiculous price of 2 euros and 50 cents, that was an outrage. But now if cosmetics in games cost more than people's real life monthly salaries, we play the oh but they're just cosmetics card. The same card that is keeping this house of cards standing, I remind you. True, there are indeed cosmetics, but I think that just underestimates the value cosmetics have in the gaming world. As stated earlier, the extra charm cosmetics can add to a game is not to be undervalued. In fact, their free to play games rely on many on people who are willing to spend for cosmetics. If these jacks and boots were just decoration, then why are some people deciding to buy them rather than to buy the game itself? These free-to-play games are built over FOMO, the fear of missing out. It does not matter what a game has to offer, whether it is a badge, a title or a hat. If something is temporary or exclusive, there will be a small number of fans that will do anything to obtain it, even purchasing it. Cosmetics are the perfect item to sell, since they are an item always visible by the player, meaning it feels like it was worth the purchase. Players who do not have a paid skin can be targeted by people who do, creating a first and second class player. Someone who has spent thousands of heroes within a game sees people who did not spend a dime as cheap, not supporting their favorite developers. As you recall when Minecraft was partially free and players without skins were seen as filthy casuals, I believe something similar has happened in other games like Fortnite. The system exploits people's vulnerability to FOMO, and big titles profit not from the quality of their games but from the quality of their microtransaction shenanigans. Publishers were able to convince players that this beautiful feature, which is cosmetics, that was part of the gaming world since forever, was suddenly just decoration, but at the same time very expensive. Customizing your character's clothes is a fantastic feature to have in games, so for that reason I stand against this malpractice and I invite you to give more attention to games that allow you to change clothes without inserting your credit card details. Clothing in video games is amazing, and we should not have anyone taking it away and charging us for it.
You may not think much about clothing and gaming as you do in real life, yet counterintuitively there are people out there that will spend more time and money in gaming shops than in real ones. When cosmetics are present in a game for free, by paying with whatever currency the game uses, it can be a very fun activity dressing your character however you want. Hiding this feature behind a paywall is in my modest opinion an insult to devoted players. I hope we give the same respect to cosmetics as much as we do for our gameplay elements in the future. If you made it this far, I wanted to thank you one too many cosmetics times for watching today's video. I must admit, originally this video was supposed to be a shopping in video games, an easy going look at how shopping was portrayed in various games, but it evolved into a critique about microtransactions. Despite that, I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, do not forget to leave this video a like, to share it and to subscribe for more. I wish you all a wonderful day, and until next time, arrivederci!